I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Once again, I welcome those of you connecting to us to this program. I am particularly grateful to God for modern technology that allows us to fellowship this way across thousands of miles. With the lockdown, church buildings have been shut down, but churches have not been closed because this is a church meeting right here. So we thank God that he has made a way for us to fellowship one with the other and for us to discuss the word and be blessed by the Holy Word of God. Again, I feel compelled to offer a special welcome to those of you who are not settled the Adventists, it is an honor to have you. And I pray sincerely that the Lord will bless you, touch you, and put into your heart a love, an unending, undying love for truth. Not as I said, a love for truth, because it is truth alone that sanctifies according to the words of Christ. In John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, the Bible says, this is your sanctification. This is the will of God, even your sanctification. Sanctification is God's will for you. And Jesus said it must be done through the word, which is truth. Without truth, no one can be sanctified. So thank you very much for loving the truth. May the Lord bless you, protect your family from the coronavirus, and grant you a place in his kingdom when he comes. Before I get into the message, I'll ask you to do two favors for me. One, I want you to pray for me while I speak. Just say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. That is based on Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9, which says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Favor number two, I want you to think as you listen. Isaiah 1, 18, come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. And I ordinarily ask for a third favor, which is turn phones off, but I won't do that now because you're all at home and you need to use your phones, and that's fine, I imagine. Let's bow our heads now and let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you, dear God, for this glorious privilege to worship you via technology. It is a skill you've given to men and women, and we thank you for it. I ask you, dear God, to cleanse my heart from sin, Put your words literally in my mind and mouth, Father. I offer myself to you for service. Let your spirit control me, dear God, 100%. I offer no resistance. Bless all those who are joining, wherever they are. Bless them, Father, with saving truth. 
and bless them in all other areas of their lives. Provide the material needs. Protect them from the coronavirus, dear God. But in all these difficult times, let their faith in you grow. Now speak to me clearly, I pray, and let the words of truth convict the hearts of those who are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us go to Genesis chapter 2. We shall read verse 9 and then 16 and 17. Genesis 2, verse 9, then 16 and 17. And the Lord God, and out of the ground, made the Lord God to grow every tree that's pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life, also the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. In verse 9 of Genesis 2, we're told that God provided food. Of course, back then, it was plant-based diet. There was no killing of animals for food. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight and good for food. God provided it. This is physical food. And we're told early that it is essential even for sinless beings to eat. It is by God's design that we must eat. In verse 8, the Bible says, and the Lord God planted the garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. We are told very early that sinless beings in a sinless world need homes in which to live. Adam had his home, a home for him and for his wife Eve. These are material things. A home is a material thing. The food in our kitchens, on our plates, these are material things. Material things are absolutely essential to our daily lives. I repeat that. Material things are essential to our daily lives. All of physical creation was material. When God made the land, he made the water. He made the trees on the third day of the grass. He made the sun, moon, and stars. They're all physical material. <clears throat> on day five, he made the birds and the fish material. On day six, he made land animals. And of course, he made human beings. We live on a material world by God's arrangement. Now let's go down to verse 16 of chapter two and see something spiritual. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayst freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was also a fruit tree. It was something material. God gave Adam and Eve a test. The test was based on something material, but the test was spiritual. Of every tree of the garden thou mayst freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. This was a command. That's the word used in verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man. That command was spiritual. Now we have a spiritual command and something material. And Adam and Eve had to choose between faithfulness to the spiritual command or attach themselves to the material thing which had its place in their lives. And I need to repeat that. Material things are necessary by God's arrangement. Out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that's pleasant to the sight and good for food. Food was a life-saving necessity, even before sin. Now God gives them a spiritual reality, which was a command. Here's the command. Here's the spiritual reality. Both came from God. But God tells Adam and Eve, if you violate this command, you will die. They had a choice to choose the spiritual above the physical, or to place the physical of the material above the spiritual. This is common to us today. In this time of corona, coronavirus, COVID-19, lockdowns, you cannot travel to supermarkets or other places, and in some countries the lockdown is very severe. I've seen videos of people being beaten with sticks, 
in the lovely country of Kenya. People locked up. People stopped by police. In the United States a few days ago, a lady was uh, arrested and put in jail. Uh, people have been arrested on beaches because they have been protesting. The lockdowns are quite severe in some countries. The lockdown does not inhibit access to spiritual things because you and I are engaging in something spiritual. The lockdown does not prevent a person from reading the Bible. The lockdown does not prevent someone from reciting a verse in the head and, <coughs> excuse me, meditating on that verse. The lockdown has affected mainly the material side of our lives. And the material side has its place, and I must continue to stress that. But God said, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. If you place the material above the spiritual, you will die. This was taught to us in the Garden of Eden, even before sin entered the world with the disobedience of Adam and Eve. This habit of placing material above spiritual has persisted from Adam and Eve down to the day. Let us go to Genesis 25. We will look at a very, very well-known example of the material being placed above the spiritual. But before I get to Genesis 25, let's bow our heads and let me pray again. Father in heaven, as I continue with this message, I ask you in the name of Jesus who calls himself the truth. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is truth. Father, you are truth. In the name of Jesus, and as the Spirit leads me, and as I pray to the Father, all three are truth. Put the words of truth in my mouth, dear God, and grant to my listening friends an increasing appetite for truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Before I go to Genesis uh, 25, I feel led to go to Matthew 4. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4, gospel number 1, book number 40. Matthew 4, we'll read from verse 1. Matthew chapter 4, reading from verse 1. The Bible says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. Now this is a reaction to a need for something material, something spiritual. Jesus Christ, who was both human and divine, in his humanity, he hungered. When he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was in hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Now, we have an invitation from the enemy to do something which would lead to sin if Jesus had done it. The enemy said, Turn these stones to bread. Provide your material needs provide your physical needs. But if Christ had done that, he would have sinned and the plan of salvation would have collapsed because we cannot have a savior who has sinned. Jesus replied in verse four of Matthew four, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now this is the same Jesus who created the tree in Matthew chapter 2, verse 9. This was the same Jesus who said, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Of course, he wasn't called Jesus then, just the second member of the Godhead. But this is the same person who said, let there be light. And he tells the enemy, and by speaking to the devil, the words are also for us. Man shall not live by bread alone. There is more to your life than that which is spiritual, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, there is more to life than the material, even though the material has its place, and this was arranged by God. Listen to Jesus Christ on the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter five, uh, chapter 6, we shall read from verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. That is material. Is not the life more than meat and body than raiment? What is Christ saying? There is something more to life 
something more significant than the material. Let me repeat, at the risk of being tedious, even though the material has its place, and this is by God's arrangement. Jesus said in Matthew 4, verse 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Bread has its place. He did not say man shall not live by bread at all. He said man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. There's something higher than physical bread. There's something more important than physical food, and that is the spiritual. And in Matthew 6, he says, is not the life more than meat? and the body than raiment? Isn't there something more to life than the food we eat? Isn't there something more to life than the clothes we wear, the cars we drive, the degrees we pursue, the jobs we treasure so highly? Is there not something more to life than these things which all have their place and are essential? The answer is yes. There is something more to life than the material and that is the spiritual. And so Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. A few days ago, there was a protest in the state capital of my state of Michigan. A lot of the men were carrying rifles and guns because in my state, you are legally allowed to carry firearms and you can carry them open and the policeman won't stop you because the law allows you to do that. So some of them carry their rifles into the state house and the policeman were right there, could do nothing about it. And there's a picture of a man shouting in the face of two policemen. Now, he wasn't shouting, open the churches, reopen the churches. No, he was shouting so that his place of work might reopen. And that is fine. God invented work. There have been protests. Why? People want to go back to work. And I must repeat, that is fine. But I have not yet seen a protest. People shouting in the face of policemen to reopen churches. We are protesting for the reopening of the workplace, because the workplace provides what we need so much, and that is the material things, which I say again, have their place. What is the point I'm trying to make? All our lives should have priorities. In this trying time the world is in, because of the coronavirus, perhaps our faith is being tested. What do I value more, the material or the spiritual? Am I willing to sacrifice the spiritual in order to preserve the material? It could be that the faith of many people are being tested right now. How truly do I believe in God? Is God really first? And when Adam and Eve chose the material above the spiritual, they effectively put the material ahead of God. Now, let us go to Genesis 25 and look at the story I hinted at earlier, which is well known to all Bible believers people. Genesis 25, we'll read from verse 29. This is an incident in the lives of Esau and Jacob, the sons of Isaac and Rebekah. Verse 29 of Genesis 25. The Bible says, and Jacob sawed pottage. That's material. And Esau came from the field and he was faint. He was hungry. That's material. That's a physical reaction. And Esau said, to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. The pottage was red. Edom means red, reddish. Esau, in a physical state of hunger, his material self yearned for food, which is the way God made us. There is nothing sinful about hunger. There is nothing illegitimate or unrighteous about desiring food. Nothing at all. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. Now, that's spiritual. It had material blessings too, but it was essentially spiritual. Jacob said, I will give you something physical if you give up something spiritual. Here you are in the office of a potential employer. He will give you something material, a job, if you give up something spiritual the Sabbath. And I pause for that to sink in. Jacob said to Esau, sell me this day thy birthright. You give me something spiritual, I will give you something physical. Now, to understand the severity of this offer that Jacob made, what Jacob offered Esau would satisfy him for one day, perhaps half a day. What Esau would sacrifice to Jacob contained blessings that would last 
forever because the birthright also suggested the plan of salvation coming through the person who had the birthright and including, of course, eternal life through Jesus Christ. That is eternal. It's unending. It's everlasting. Esau gave up something with everlasting blessings in order to acquire something which provided temporary relief. I repeat, material things have their place. We were made to need material things. We are physically material. An offer was made to Esau to give up the, the spiritual for the sake of the material. Esau valued the material over the spiritual. Now, I'm not glorifying Jacob. Jacob appreciated the value of the birthright, but he went about it the wrong way. So I'm not glorifying his deceit or his theft. I am simply emphasizing the fact that the spiritual <clears throat> and the physical must be kept in their proper place. Each one has its place, but the material must never take the place of the, of the, the spiritual in a person's life. We must have priorities, and our priority list must begin, number one, the spiritual, on number one, God. On number one, the word of truth, which is the word of life, which contains the very life of God. This must always be number one in the life of the believer. That's why Jesus said, when the devil said, turn these stones to bread and fulfill your material needs. And Jesus, a genuine material need, he was hungry. There may be someone listening to me. You have a genuine material need. <clears throat> You've got three children. You're out of work. You're being offered a job, but you must work on Sabbath. <clears throat> there may be someone listening to me. You've been single. You're 35. You're a lady. Here's a man desiring to marry you, but he's not of the faith. What do you do? You follow, <clears throat> excuse me, the counsel of Jesus Christ who died to us. This is your savior speaking. When he said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. There's something beneficial about hard times. Hard times reveal who is really on the Lord's side and who is not. Hard times reveal how deep the roots of our faith go down in the soil of truth. Hard times reveal who is willing to suffer for God and give up the pleasures of this life. Hard times bring us face to face with who we really are in the context of our relationship with God. Christ came to die for us. That's why he came. The Bible says in 316, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But do not believe by the Bible saying God gave him, that God threw him out of heaven or God shoved him. Jesus agreed to come. He came willingly. There was no obligation on Christ to come. He came out of love for us and for the Father. He came willingly to save you and me. It is this Jesus that says, put the spiritual above the physical. It is this Jesus who said, there is more to life than your job. Even though the very first person in the Bible to work is God. This is the same Jesus who had one outfit, one coat, one suit, one. There's nothing wrong with the physical or the material. But he says to us, is not the life more than meat? Isn't there something we need to stand up for, even at the risk of losing the material? The answer is yes. So what is that thing? Truth. We see that in the life of Daniel. Daniel was willing to face hungry lions in order not to pray to a man. Because commandment two says, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything. That is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath. Thou shalt not bow down to thyself to them, nor serve them. If he had prayed to Darius, even in the privacy of his room, he would have been bowing to Darius. And Daniel placed faithfulness to God above his very life. Is this not what Daniel also did in chapter 1 of the book of Daniel? When Nebuchadnezzar prescribed a certain diet, and Daniel said no. 
the three Hebrew boys said no at the risk of their lives. Because the Bible prescribed there's some things we must not eat. Is not this the risk the three Hebrew boys took in Daniel 3? When they said we're not bowing to the Buchanan's image. When they were given a second chance, they said no. Many of us are continually harassed by the devil because the devil does not see a determination to stand for the truth. He knows we're easy targets. And so he comes or he sends his agents and they come and they come. But if we would take a position the way Ruth took a position regarding her mother-in-law, Ruth chapter 1 from verse 16, entreat me not to leave thee or to return from falling after thee. For where thou goest, I will go. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people will be my people. Thy God, my God. Where thou diest, I will die. And there will I be buried. Ruth made it 100% clear to Naomi that she was determined to follow Naomi. The Bible says when Naomi saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, she left her alone. We must let our friends know. Our employers know. Our family members know. We are steadfastly minded to place the spiritual above the physical. To place, thus said the Lord, above work, clothes, food, promotion, all the material things which in the, in the, have their own place. They're all legitimate in their own right, but must never take priority over the spiritual. What am I trying to tell you? In this time of coronavirus, it's a crisis for the world. And people are protesting to go back to work, violent protests. What has this shown you and me regarding our connection to God, our faith in God, our determination to serve God at the cost or at the loss of the physical and the material? Jesus said, and I'm coming to the close, what is a man profited? If he gained the whole world, that's a material, and lose his soul, what sense does it make to gain something that is severely temporary and lose something that extends forever? It makes no sense. How can you be a graduate of a university and make that kind of senseless choice and then declare yourself to be intelligent? What is a man profited? And this is God asking, how do you gain? What's the sense? What's the point? If he gain the whole world and lose his soul. Jesus did not say, don't gain the world. He said, don't gain it at the loss of your soul. I ask you with respect and directness. Is Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 a theme in your life? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, even in the time of the coronavirus. It's Matthew 6, 25, a theme in your life. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, nor what you shall drink, nor what you shall put on. Take no thought for your life. This is the physical he's talking about. Always take thought for the spiritual. Never relax your thought for the spiritual. You may relax your thought for the material, and sometimes that's necessary. Never relax your thought for the spiritual. Jesus says, take no thought for your life, the physical, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, or yet for your body, what you shall put on. Do not allow the material to dominate your thinking. Is not the life more than meat? You answer that. Isn't there more to this body than clothes? Isn't there more to my life than what I have that are three-dimensional, that are physical. There's more to life than that. And that is to have a relationship with God that supersedes and stands above <clears throat> and beyond every other consideration in the life. If Adam had adopted that attitude, we would not be living in a world today, this world of sin. And so God said to Adam, and I am coming to the close, in Genesis 3, verse 17, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. What did the voice say? 
eat the fruit, spiritual, because you went after something material at the recommendation of someone the other else, someone else. Cursed is the ground for your sake. Does God want you fed? Yes. He made food. Does God want you clothed? Yes. He made an original garment of light. Sin came, the light went. He provided coats of skin. He wants us clothed. Does God want you with roof under your head, over your head? Yes. He made a home for Adam, Genesis 2.8. Does he want you to be well fed? Yes. He provided food, Genesis 2.9. Does he want you to have companionship? Yes. He gave that to Adam. But none of that must take the place of obedience to God. And so I recite for the final time, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Genesis 2, 16, 17, of every tree of the garden thou mayst freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. That was a command. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. If you place the material above God, the physical above God, although they have their place, you will die eternally. You will die well dressed. You will die well employed. You will die in your beautiful home. You will die with a bank account the size of Mount Rushmore or Mount Kilimanjaro. You will die with these things. You can be saved with them. If you put the spiritual first, what is your choice? Put God first. The coronavirus crisis may be seen as the wilderness for many of us. But remember, in the wilderness, God provided food. In the wilderness, he provided water. In the wilderness or desert, he provided cooling at night, at, during the day when it's burning hot, and warmth at night when it's freezing cold. God demonstrated, I can take care of you in times of crisis. But the Bible says there was not one feeble person among the tribes. Psalm 105 verse 37, not one feeble person. My friends, I call upon you in the name of Jesus. Review your relationship with God. Put him first. And live by the counsel, the, the theme given to you by the Jesus you love. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. God wants to take care of you. He is responsible for those who are his children. Not simply those who say, Lord, Lord. Those who are his children through total surrender. God wants to take care of you. He wants to protect you. He wants to guide you. But it must be done his way with him at the helm of your life. Why does God want to be one? Because it is the only position for which he can save you. He cannot save you from position two. May the Lord bless you, guide you, grant you that wisdom from above. To put God first. And to live with the understanding which brings peace. That when you are right with God, and that's only possible when it's first. You cannot be right with God if he isn't first. To be right with God means God is first. If he is first, he'll take care of you. In crisis, out of crisis. And as you keep the spiritual above the material, one day and one day soon, Jesus Christ will come to give you the reward for your spiritual faithfulness, not your reward for the material, your reward for the spiritual faithfulness you've demonstrated. May the Lord bless you as you recommit yourself to place the spiritual God above the material. Let's pray. Father in heaven, in order to place the spiritual above the material, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. He brings the very life of Christ, who said in John 8, 29, And he that hath sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Let this be our desire, to do always those things that please you. Bless all those who connect today, God. I mean, Father, bless them beyond the expectation. Bless them as families. Bless them as individuals, Father. Take care of them. Bless them to such a degree that they will conclude, this is God moving in my life. Put a double blessing on their children, Father, and save every one of them without losing one. In Jesus' name I pray. 
Amen.